So we told you that uh, the balloting for the positions on the ballot paper for the NDC presidential hopefuls took place. And um, former President John Romani Mahama retained his number three spot from the last time on the presidential ballot paper, which will be used for the party's upcoming flag bearership race next month. We also know that um, Sylvester Mensah was number four, Joshua Labi number seven, Ekos Pio Gabra number five. And um, we also know that the party intends making sure that on February 23, all is well for its primary, presidential primary for the NDC. And uh, let's bring you this package. When we come back, we'll also be speaking to, um, we have Dr. Ali Dusedu, who is a senior political science lecturer with the political science department at the University of Ghana. And then we we'll also have on stream Dr. Kobe Mensah. He's a marketing consultant. He's also a lecturer with the University of Ghana Business School, but focuses on political marketing and political communication. But um, uh, let's get all this. Well, when we come back, we'll, we'll have the latest for you. The balloting, which was scheduled to take place at 10 Wednesday morning, was rescheduled for 3 p.m. because the voting committee was yet to submit its report to the Functional Executive Committee. Upon receipt of the report, the election committee for the presidential primaries began the process. Three out of the seven qualified aspirants were present, whilst the rest delegated others to participate in the process. Koku Ahido is a member of the election committee. The Honorable A.S.K. Bagbin shall be number one on the ballot paper. Alaji Nuruddin Idrisu shall be number two on the ballot paper. John Dramani Mahama, His Excellency, shall be number three on the ballot paper. Sylvester Edina Mensa, Honorable, shall be number four on the ballot paper. Dr. Ekos Gabra shall be number five on the ballot paper. Comrade Guzitano shall be number six on the ballot paper. And then number seven, Professor Joshua Alabi. And so we have finished with that process. I think um, that all the contestants and aspirants agree that it went well and fair. Second Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Abam Babin, says his number one sport on the ballot means he is the chosen one to lead the party. It's by his grace that I picked the number one. And everybody knows the number one means the first. And the first means the highest. And that is the best. And so I thank God for that position. And, and I'm very, very confident that that is the winning position. And you think that's going to have any uh, impact on the elections? Sure, that is why it will be the winning position. It has serious impact. Because if you are not the best, you never get the first. Wasn't it by just shared into of luck that you picked number one? Well, why should the luck then befall on me and not any other person? Mm. That shows that that is the chosen one. So Mr. Mingsa, who will occupy the number four position, on the ballot believes he is ordained to become the fourth president from the NDC. Taking number four simply tells a story that Sylvester Mensah, the fourth president of the Republic of Ghana. Uh, 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 numbers have meaning, but above all, it is important and significant for us to move into a third gear of campaign, engage our grassroots a lot more, ensure that the trust and confidence reposed in us is sustained, and ensure that we continue to resonate with the mass of our people. Numbers have meaning, and uh, Ghanaians believe in some of these, and uh, uh, I guess that we wait and see what the outcome will be in uh, February 23rd. Campaign coordinator for Gujitano, Nasser Abdullahi, argues that the campaign message is more important than the number six position on the ballot. Um, any position on the ballot is good. What is important is the message. I think after over 20 years of practicing democracy and practicing you know voting in this country i don't think the voters are that naive to be following the position of a ballot in order to vote i think it's about who they really want to vote and what message you are selling for them so we are happy with the number six we are happy with where we are no, wouldn't that be a disadvantage 
No, it's not a disadvantage. Well, I mean, we've had people win election in this country without being at the top, and we have people who have been at the top or been at the last perform abysmally in election. So it doesn't, I know people say we want to be number one or we want to be number seven, but realistically, and you know, if you look at the data, it doesn't support that any position like that affects the, um, the, the, the election results. Chrissy Parker Wilson, reporting for Joy News. And we told you that we'll be having some of the candidates also speak to us. We'll be speaking to Sylvester Mensah, who picked number four on the slot. So uh, you have uh, his number and the pictures um, or the picture of him on number four on the ballot paper. We'll be speaking to him very soon. Also, uh, get on the line, Dr. Ali Dusedu. Uh, he is with the uh, University of Ghana Political Science Department. And... Uh, uh, we'll have him very soon to speak to. Uh, well, he's already on stream. Good morning to you. Good morning to you, Dr. Ali Dusedu. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Walker. Yeah. And then when um, we, we all have been following the internal activities and elections of the NDC, uh, and uh, once it's culminated into picking the, the numbers, it also means that the election is nearer than we think. Um, what will be your observation so far in terms of how the individuals who have expressed interest to be flag bearers or to be a flag bearer of the NDC have um, comported themselves or acted so far? I think so far they've all comported themselves well. A majority of them have been big guys in the party. They have struggled for the party's success over the past 20, 10 years. So I think basically we weren't very sure because of this uh, court injunction thing when the elections will come. So now that they've been able to go past that issue and then they have uh, picked positions on the ballot box, it means that very soon we're going to have uh, the real deal and then everybody will be able to know who the delegates want to lead the party and then to now be left with the party to mobilize uh, and pick up from the fallout of the elections and then move towards 2020. But we know that uh, this is big business. It also means that um, the actions of these individuals and ultimately whoever becomes a flag bearer uh, is an intention to be an alternative to the existing government and party in government. Um, if you look at the things that have been done so far, the utterances, the comments on the campaign platform, the interaction with the delegate, what have been said, what do you think they could point to to be the intentions of these individuals and for the party? So basically, it, it was a kind of uh, attacks on the records and also the personal character of the uh, elected uh, Sorry, appointed in Bidouas under the Mahama administration, we could see uh, Mr. Bagbin making several uh, attempts, which was played over, and then uh, a lot of people condemned him for that. But apart from that particular utterance, when he picked out specific individuals that was appointed by the Mahama government, and then said they weren't fit for business. Apart from that moving forward, you see that they have all been calm. But if you look at the history of governance over the years, you see that the other candidates ganged up against former President John Dramani, Mahama, because he has been in, in power before and he has done a lot of work. What I do think is that there are, there are three things critically here, and it all points to a kind of one-man race. Even though all there are, there are about six or, I think six or seven candidates, I'm not sure. But President, former President John Dramani, Mahama, stands out based on several research which has been conducted by individuals, by organizations, and then groups. And then if you also realize during the run up to the campaign season, I think about four or five of them ganged up against just President, former President John Dramani Mahama. So it all points to the fact that he's one of the most popular candidates. He's one of the most known candidates. He's one of the guys who, who has a lot of resources to be able to pull this election off and then be able con to contest fiercely with the candidate Nana Adodanko Akufado if he intends to go for the 2020 elections. 
So I think w what the NDC should do now, and all the other candidates should be aware of, is the fact that they are all competing to serve the interests of the NDC and to bring the NDC back to power. So they have to be very circumspective of the utterances that they make now, the attacks that they, they, they bring out, and then most of the speeches that they, they give to the public. Because these issues are going to be used against the party if one of them is elected at the end of the day. So what I should see more is the candidates talking about their capacities, their competence, their track record, and what they can do to bring the party back to power, rather than attacking the character and the personality of the people who are vying to lead the NDC. That would be a very good weapon given to parties that they'll be contesting with in the 2020 elections. And ultimately, of course, we know that it's the MPP, and the MPP is forming the party in government. Do you think that um, the, the messages um, prior to the main primary or the election should only be confined to issues related to the NDC or it should be national? I, I think it should be both. Because one, you are winning the flag bearership of the NDC is a means to an end. And the end is winning power for the NDC in national elections. So it's not just telling the delegates how you are fit to lead the NDC, your capacity and your competence, but you should also go beyond that and tell them what strategies you can put in place to win them the ultimate prize, that is the presidency. So if you, if you watch the campaign message of former President John Draman and Mahama over the years, you see that he has even gone beyond just telling the delegates how fit he is because he believes he has a track record. He has been there before. Most of his messages attack the policies of the current government, the personality of the current government, and it is putting him in the posture of what? Running for the presidency rather than running to lead the party. I know a lot of people have critiqued him for doing that because they think you haven't yet won the primaries and you are going to contest, sorry, campaign as if you are going for the national elections. It shows the level of confidence that he has in himself and his capacity and then the team that is leading his campaign. And he believes that it is kind of a done deal winning the party fibership, what he needs to do is to prove to Ghanaians that he has a capacity to contest and compete with the incumbent government and then the incumbent party, and will be able to deploy the resources that is needed to be able to win the NDC, the presidency. So I think it, it, it will be suicidal to kind of limit your campaign message to just how fit you are to lead the NDC. You are not just leading the NDC, but you are leading the NDC to achieve power. What will you do? as an alternative to what the current government is doing, so that floating voters, NDC members, and even MPP members will post confidence in you and give you the nod to lead the country after 2020. So I think the message should be kind of balanced, looking at how you fit into the party slot and also how you can be competitive vis-a-vis -vis the, the incumbent government and then the person that you put forward in 2020. Interesting an observation you've made, and by your observation, do you think that the other candidates um, have been able to be nationalistic enough or to, or perhaps maybe also try to send messages that tend to relate to national issues, the current uh, policy positions of the current government, or offer the alternative, just like John Dramani Mahama have done, or should they be doing that, and why should they be? From, from the observations I've made so far on their campaign utterances and speech, most, most of the things, the, the issues that they speak to at the national level have always been reactionary. Maybe a specific policy issue happens, then they react to it in the national character of a sense. But they haven't made it a deliberate policy like former President John Mahama has been doing to speak to specific and, and regular updated national issues. If you look at President, former President Dramani Mahama, most of his campaign platform, he speaks to national issues. The free senior high policy, the mining policy, Galamsey, corruption, uh, family and friends government. So most of his messages have, have been tailored to suit the national level campaign, rather than specifically to the party level. Mm. What I think, I think it, it will be prudent that the other candidates do not only speak to 
the, 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 the NDC primaries as a contest, but they should also once in a while speak to national issues. That make them national candidates in character rather than just a party candidate. And what I've also observed is that most of their speeches focus on how they are fit to lead the NDC and how President John Draman in Mahama hasn't been able to do a lot of things that they think they should be able to do. So their message is tailored to their competence, but also the incompetence, quote and unquote, of or the failures or the, 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 the gaps in administration of former President John Draman in Mahama. I think once they are able to wade into national issues and speak to it, people can be able to tell how, how knowledgeable they are about those particular situations, how they can display their competence when they face challenges of those kind. Because what you usually do is that you don't only speak to the national issue that is trending, but you prefer solutions to those national issues, alternative solutions to what the government is doing. If you do that, people will know that if you are given the note to lead, you have already positioned yourself, you have already programmed your mind to be national in character, to offer solutions to national issues, and to provide alternative policy positions other than what the current government is doing. That suggests that you are not only looking within the party, you are looking beyond the party. And I urge all the other candidates to tailor their campaign message and look beyond the party towards national elections 2020. That makes you a very credible, formidable, all-rounded kind of candidate. Uh, so that's a disadvantage you point. But ultimately, we know that um, whether win or lose, whoever becomes a flag bearer needs to rally either side, the bulk who have lost and the one who has won. So what should be the, the perhaps the, the coordination or the camaraderie between them just immediately after the elections or the primary? Because they all need each other, I think. I think... Definitely, they do. I think it is, it is good to have a, a united front mm. in the run up to 2020. But I've said in other platforms, including Joy FM, that y unity is desirable, but it is not always sufficient and necessary for a party to win elections. One, after the primaries, the winner should be able to extend that kind of gesture to the losing candidates, let them know how important they are to the party and how rallying together as a party can help their victory in 2020. If the winning candidate makes such a gesture and then there are other candidates that are, that are not willing to buy into it, I don't think the winning candidate will be forced to move along with them if they don't want to. And I've given examples. In the run up to the 2016 elections, the MPP was seen as the most divided party. If you had gone to their headquarters, every day there was a focal camp fighting John Mahaman camp. There was invisible forces against Borga Bulldogs. There was a lot of things happening, suspensions. And people thought the, N the MPP was divided. Their rank was divided. And then the NDC portrayed themselves as a very united, formidable party. But you look at the margin of difference in the 2016 elections. It was overwhelming. And the first time in the history of the Fourth Republic that an opposition party won elections hands down without moving to a second round, in the first round. So it is very crucial that the candidates, both losing and winning candidates, close their ranks and present a formidable phone. That will help the party. But if there are chances that this is not possible, they should build consensus. The winning candidate should look out to the losing candidate that are willing to support and come on board and work with them. And then be able to present their strategy in such a way that it will be convincing to Ghanaians, Ghanaians will buy into it, and then be able to, to vote them back to power. And the NDC is in, is in a kind of disadvantage because they are in the position. So if you're in the position, it takes you an extra mile and an extra effort to be able to campaign and convince Ghanaians that what the current government is doing is not right, and you are going to do it in a, in a rightful manner. And we always say in political science terms that elections is always a, a, a census on the performance of the incumbent government. If the incumbent government is seen to be doing so well, then it makes the, 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 the work of the opposition more difficult because a more tedious because they have to prove beyond all reasonable doubts that the, the good thing that the, uh, the incumbent government is doing, they can do better than that. If the incumbent government is not doing so well, then it makes their work a little bit kind of easier. But over the years, we have seen a lot of surveys that suggest that 
the incumbent government is doing uh, uh, good in a lot of policy issues, even though they have a lot of uh, improvement to do in other policy issues. So it suggests that moving forward, the party need to make the effort to close their ranks after the primaries. But if it's not working, the winning candidate should identify people with same character and same attitude and same policy positions and work with them. And then they'll be able to do better moving to 2020. Mm. Well, I have to let you go, though, but just a last question. And, and we also know that, uh, you know, winning the election, and you have talked about rallying everybody, creating the unity, uh, is a mass-based activity. Grassroots, you go down to the community level, you try to marshal resources, marshal people uh, to get to uh, persuade and convince people. That's a lot of work. Um, you just oppose that to the the work that the the incoming government is doing it looks like the ndc has a um, a tall order so to speak does it i i i i think so but it is someone that uh, it can be surmounted because one what what research have shown in the past is that especially in the 2016 elections that the mpp Sorry, the NDC, there was a serious disconnect between the NDC mm -hmm. campaign machinery, that is the flag bearership campaign machinery, and then the party. What they need to do now is to bridge that gap. It is very crucial. You see, the, the candidate alone cannot do everything. The party has structures from the world level up to the national level, and even international branches. So if the winning, the winning uh, flag bearer should work closely, should try to build unity with the losing candidate, but it should work more closely with the party and utilize the laid down structures and institutions of the party so that the campaign can, be, can, can begin from the grassroots level up to the national level. Okay. Uh, if they are able to do that and all the party machineries are well oiled and functioning, then it makes this work very easy. You just have to relate the information from the national level to the regional level to the constituency level, perhaps districts, and then the, the world level. If you do that, then you're going to see that a lot of time and resources will be saved, especially as an opposition party, to be able to use for other equally important uh, endeavors. So I, I think it, it is a tall order, I agree, but it is something that they can be able to do if the winning flag bearer works very closely with the party and then use party institutions and machinery, then it is going to work very well. We, we all know the, the Honorable Ofoswan Pofo. He's one kind of a graduate person. He moved around himself. He's not a, a chairman who just sits in a car and get things done. He moved to the constituency levels. So if the flag bearer is able to work closely with him and then the party structures, it is going to become very easy, but also the kind of alternative policies that they present to what the current government is doing. You cannot just say the government is not doing well without giving Ghanaians alternative policy positions. If they are not doing well in the free senior high, what are you going to do about what they are not doing well? If, if they are not doing well in this sector, what is the alternative position that the NDC is going to offer Ghanaians? If we can make the campaign more policy-based issues, focus and work closely with the party, and then try to forge unity, then there's a likelihood that even though the MPP is in power, the, MPP, the NDC can give them a good run for their money and their good policies they've implemented so far. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Ali Dusedo is a senior political science lecturer with the, um, with the University of Ghana Political Science Department. But uh, the numbers, do they mean anything to you? Do they, do they even um, have any impact on the voters in the first place? Because uh, I, I, there's always the intro, for example, we have an intro that yeah, says I, former I, president <laughs> John Romani Mama retained his uh, number three position or spot, <laughs> etc. You see, Mr. Walker, people can make meanings out of where they are placed. Yeah. But, but I think what is important is the credibility, the competence the marketability, and then the integrity of the candidate. Once you have all these things, whether you are placed first or middle or last, you are going to win. People make minutes out of it, but apart from those minutes they will make out of it, nothing is so important about it. It's, it's who you are <laughs> and what you are capable of doing. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Dr. Ali Dusedu, Senior Lecturer, Political Science Department, University of Ghana. We have um, number four.
um, person on the ballot paper, Mr. Sylvester Adina Mensa. And uh, good morning to you. We have you on the line. Uh, good morning, good morning, Roland, and uh, good morning to uh, uh, listeners or viewers, whichever. Well, we've been following the good work you've been doing in the campaign so far. You, you, you seem to have been up there with the stakes as far as the competition is related. Uh, and you picked number four. Um, how did that come about? Did they pull it in a bowl? And uh, relatedly, what does it mean to you as well? Well, let me say that I, I went into this balloting with an open mind and uh, not looking for any particular positioning on the ballot paper. I don't believe in positioning, but I had to pray so that the good Lord would just place me where I should be. And thankfully, uh, I picked number four. And if you look at number four within the context of uh, NDC politics, we have had three presidents in the country, President Rawlings, number one, President Mills, number two, President Mahama, number three. And uh, all three are done in terms of politics and leadership of this country. And so we are now on the fourth leadership. And so this contest is about who becomes the fourth flag bearer of the NDC and eventually the fourth president of the NDC in Ghana. And so to the extent that this makes meaning to you, so be it. But importantly, uh, the work is on the field. Our ability to engage our delegates on the ground, uh, our ability to give the right uh, message, our ability to understand the expectations and to meet these expectations, and to track and accord the issue of the uh, uh, able to get your delegates to believe in you and what I guess on the right, my net is better the fish because I net the support. A couple of regions to visit. We well, seem to have some difficulty with the line, and so if we ca if we can have you just push push yourself um, perhaps differently from where you're standing, uh, perhaps we can do a reconnection of the line. And uh, we also know that the others on the on the ballot paper as well. John Dramani Mahama picked number three, and uh, we have um, Joshua Labi number seven, and um, others also on the on the. On the, on the line as well. So um, we'll, we'll keep you up to, up to date with all that has been happening or is going to happen in the NDC. Uh, February 23 it is. And um, you have to also uh, keep interacting with um, your various delegates that you have earmarked. Um, where will you be visiting next and what is the main focus of the messages that you're telling them? Well, can you hear me now? I can hear you adequately. Great. Uh, my, I have various themes. My messages have hinged largely on unity, unity within the party. Um, victory margins are low, and there's a need for everyone to be on board. And so we have been quite circumspect, and uh, we have been preaching unity. Two, we have been giving assurance of uh, rewarding loyalty, which appears to be a missing link within our party, generating a lot of apathy and enchantment, uh, leading to the kind of inertia that we experienced in the uh, last elections, 2016 elections, and also assurance of uh, 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 prosperity for all, uh, ensuring that we, 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 we do away with the family and friends of uh, government and business, and to ensure that we we run uh, some moral type of uh, uh, government to ensure that all Ghanaians are seen as uh, one people and mm. we don't, as it were, place emphasis on tribes and regions and uh, as we can experience today within the MPP. And, uh, uh, of course, I mean, we have our own share while we're in government. And the idea is to move drastically away from that. Again, to give power back to the
the people to get the party's influence in government strengthened and to review some aspects of our party constitution. These have been part of my team. And also sharing with them the belief in uh, common humanity that no one should uh, get up without food on his table. Everyone must have shelter over his head. And also the idea of uh, deepening our social democratic credentials and uh, uh, proposals on policies uh, that would, uh, as it were, provide a broader uh, social safety net for our people, social protection policies. And uh, again, issues relating largely to employment, employment and employment. We've also made them understand that in running a government, you have two key uh, uh, ingredients. One is are the hard factors and two, the soft factors. The hard factors have to do largely with infrastructure. And of course, uh, NDC might have scored a very high mark in infrastructure. But at the end of the day, uh, it does not take infrastructure alone to generate the kind of patronage that a party needs for victory. We need to look at the soft factors. We need to look at policies, policies that generate jobs, policies that put food on our table, policies that put money in our pocket, without which infrastructure fails into insignificance. Perhaps we scored over, we scored 100% in infrastructure, but without the complement of policies that would generate jobs, food, and money in our pocket, we all saw what the outcome was. So Mr. Mensa has been preaching the idea of uh, not paying lip service to changing the structure of our economy. We have been talking about how to create jobs and how to move away from uh, artificial or temporary jobs as we see within the MPP with NACOPS that has a, a, a two, three-year employment opportunity after which all slide back into unemployment. These are not sustainable, and uh, we want to look at something more permanent, something more sustainable, something that can... Uh, offer uh, progression in job or in employment. Uh, we've been looking at uh, matters of uh, focusing on agriculture as low-hanging fruit, doing away with affords such as motorbikes and bicycles during our farmers' days, and making the farmers' day celebration a lot more uh, useful to our farmers by providing them, at, perhaps at a regional level, with a uh, 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 processing equipment, the best bamboo farmer must have an equipment for processing bamboo to speak to service the entire Ghanaian market to make a bamboo farmer rich. Pineapple farmer must, the regional best pineapple farmer must have an equipment for processing pineapple into pineapple juice for local consumption and eventually for export to make the pineapple farmer rich. The mm. idea is to, is to create wealth for individuals and wealth for this country. That is what Ghana needs into the future. And also sharing ideas on other strategies for creating jobs largely for the large numbers of uh, untrained and unskilled labor in the textile and garment industry that uh, has so much capacity to employ okay. so many across the country. We have been dealing also largely with some of the loose ends and challenges that led to our defeat in the 2016 elections and uh, assuring party members on how those should not recur and okay. our assurances on what we're going to do differently to ensure that we are able to generate and sustain the level of enthusiasm within our party and to be able to sustain ourselves in government. Uh, right. I think that we have been speaking around these themes mm. and uh, the endorsement is high and uh, we are highly motivated. We are confident that the outcome of these elections will be completely different from the kind of perceptions that we hear around uh, the cities. All right. Uh, now that the numbers are out, we know the positions, we'll come to you as individual candidates and um, try to get some great interaction with you, with um, our recording devices, and we'll get some great insights ultimately. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Sylvester Adina Mensa is number four on the ballot uh, paper of the NDC presidential primaries. It will be taking place on February 23 or 23rd February 2018. And we'll bring you, of course, that live coverage. It will be across the country. So trust us. We'll bring you the best as far as that is concerned.